All right, I think we're live. I think we are live, guys. Good, good afternoon. Uh, let me actually check my sound quality. Make sure we are good to go. Let's see. Make sure we are good to go. Yep. All right. So this is going to be a great lesson, guys. We're going to go over living off the land. Make sure the camera's good. We're going to go be going over living off the land, ethical hacking. Explain, guys. So I'm going to give everyone some time to get situated. I actually believe, let me check if that's in the description. So we do have course review. If you want to rate this course, see, you know, how well I'm doing, you know, looking forward to feedback. It's in the description below. So please rate the course. All right. So guys, this is going to be dope. I can't wait. Super excited to teach this portion. <laughs> I had this cat class planned for a good week. We're going to see how this goes. Okay. You know, I got to get the water in. All right. Okay, um, let me actually get the course lesson. Oh, I got the wrong banner. Let me fix that. I'm never prepared. Uh, is it? There we go. All right, let's keep let's get this started. Let me actually get the course material up and running. Do, 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 do. And we're pretty, we're gonna open up with the course material and then we're gonna try to do a lab and if we do have some spare time we're probably going to close it off with some cybersecurity news articles if you guys been paying attention to the news you would have heard about the pentagon you know leaks on a, a alleged minecraft discord and all this crazy stuff so we got we got a lot we got a lot jam-packed today um where the heck did i put the course let me see documents okay it's right here it is right here so let me share a screen all right and we're going to full screen this. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Present. Okay. There we go. All right. Le ethical hacking, living off the land. All right. Are you guys ready? Did you guys get your teepees, your tents? All right. Your shovels, your tools? Because what we're about to do today, we're about to live off the land. All right. So this is going to be a very informative uh, lesson today. This is something... I didn't realize I was doing, <laughs> you know, practicing in these, you know, capstones in the TCM Academy uh, practical ethical hacking course. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, guys, let me actually drop this in the chat. I'm going to show you guys something real quick before we start this lesson. I'm going to drop this in the, in the chat. Um, let me see. Let me go to their website. If you guys go to TCM, no, nah, I click certification. I meant Academy. If you go to their website right now, Practical Ethical Hacking is free right now. All right. So let me see if I can find that link. There we go. Right here. Let me drop it in the chat. It's free just for today. So you guys may want to just jump, you know, jump on it as soon as possible. That is it right there. Copy it. It's free. Pay what you can. Very great course. I'll try to get some uh, studying in that daily. Okay. So just drop that in there. And we're going to be talking about ethical hacking, living off the land. Let's get right into it. So what is living off the land? Are we talking about actual campers? Are you doomsday preppers? What is living off the land, also known as LOTL? All right, let's go into the definition. Living off the land attacks refers to any or an attacker leveraging what is already available in the environment rather than bringing along a whole bunch of custom software and malware. All right, and guys, we <laughs> I can't wait to show you this lab. I'm going to show you a great example of that, of living off the land, just using what, what kind of tools are we, are we talking about? We have examples of this. Tools like IP config, you know, well, how does that attack? It shows you, okay, what's the IP of this target box, all right, and other networking information. You have other uh, tools like CD, change directory, being able to leverage that, you know, feasible, you know, genuine tool to move around if attacker were, if an attacker were to pop a shell all right and get into that machine so the benefit for the attacker is that their activities are less likely to flag antivirus applications because they are also sorry they are using trusted software attackers actions are more likely to blend in with normal administrative tasks right 
oh, I'm just clicking this. I'm just typing this command. It seems genuine. You know, I'm just going to CD here, make this directory. Okay, that might seem genuine. All right. And, you know, most antiviruses won't flag that because these are built in tools. But if you were to install and download all these tools, that's going to flag. Guys, if you hear the lawnmower in the background, it's because I'm living off the land. But no, no. And seriously, they are mowing the lawn right now. So please forgive me on that if you guys do hear that in the background. Okay. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> the living off the land technique provides attackers with an opportunity to fly under the radar. All right. And guys, I'm going to pause right there. This actually stems from last week's class going into OPSEC. You know, remember how I opened it up with the CRTO um, certification and, and, you know, how they broke it down. OPSEC and that concept, uh, context, they, they're trying to avoid blue teamers. All right. Especially if you're a red team person, you know, doing a, uh, uh, you know, doing some work or you're doing a session on a certain companies and you're trying to go under the radar, this is where living off the land techniques really come into play. It's not going to flag antivirus software and most blue team guys won't pick it up. A legitimate tool is less likely to raise suspicion and they could, can also avoid a lot of detection methods such as hash values, IOC, integrator, and uh, indicators of compromise and signatures, guys. And we should have a lot of time after this slide. I think it's, it's going to be a short slide, presentation slide. I want to hit the labs so I can show you guys these, you know, living off the lands, these tools in live action. Okay. Now, this, this is a SAP from CrowdStrike's um, Global Threat Report, all right, from 2019. Over 40% plus, actually, yeah, over 40% plus, all right, of attacks are now performed using already installed tools and features. All right, for those you know studying for the PMPT or OSCP or whatever, you're gonna see this a lot, especially those going for hack the box and you know try hacking and stuff like that. You're gonna see this a lot using pre installed tools for your own purpose. Okay, over 40% of attack. This, this is a four year old study. All right, so imagine it now. And I think I have an updated one on the slide as well, too. 40% that is a lot. All right, so. <laughs> Look at the little plant. Why do you use me for evil? It is dangerous. All right, let's talk about this. Since these tools are usually whitelisted from rules by security operations centers, those are your SOC. That's your SOC guys. All right. These are people who proactively monitor, monitor the company's network. Now, if you're working for MSP, the client's network as well. From any, you know, benign, not benign, but any, you know, strange and unusual activity. All right. Any activity from them is also often ignored. Living off the land, LOTL, tactics enable attackers to curb the use of malware until much later stages. In the attack chain, as in the case with ransomware, leaving the victim little or no time to respond. This is heavy, man. And, oh, I, I got a good, I think I got a good class idea for, for next week. We're going to talk about APTs, all right? <laughs> advanced persistent threats and how they utilize not only offsec but living off the land that's gonna be a great class for next week guy I'm, I'm gonna try to do that i'm gonna try to do that that's a good class for next week because that's pretty much what they're doing all right they're trying to go low off the uh, radar do whatever they can ex exfiltrate all the data they can before they get detected and dip i mean shoot i could pull up some articles right now apt is just chilling in the network for years months and they go under the radar. That's real offsec. Okay. That's living off the land. Like literally. Okay. Let's move on. You see the plan right there. Stop abusing me. Stop. It also makes attribution even more time intensive as it leaves investigators to determine who is behind malicious activity if they do discover it. That's a good point right there. Let's say you know, you are living out the land. You could probably, you're probably in somebody else's account. Johnny's account. You actually say you got credits for Johnny or Lil Lilith or anything. And they're running these commands. It still doesn't show, okay, who's actually the perpetrator? Who's actually the, the threat? You know, you're masking your activities through their account. And they're using benign commands. So that's how deep it gets, man. Cyber attack groups are generally identified by the malware that they use. With sophisticated cybercrime groups and state-backed hackers often 
using custom malware, which makes it easy to identify if they are behind a certain activity. Guys, that's APT right there. <laughs> we got to do a class on that. That is APT. Okay. So can't wait to talk about that. And that's a good point right there. And it brought out ways to identify. And I believe CrowdStrike, if I'm not mistaken, they have a whole page on APTs that talk about, you know, their groups, uh, what nations they're being backed by, common tools, common, uh, you know, uh, attack vectors, all this stuff. All right. So, yeah, we're definitely going to flesh that out. Let's read on. Um, however, if an attack is carried out using living off the land tools and non-custom malware, it is much more difficult to determine who might be behind such activity, which goes back into OPSEC. So this is a this is a really serious topic, guys. You know, I mean, especially for penetration tester. Yeah, this is cool. OK, I'm living off the land. I'm using all these tools. That's great. But when a hacker, a talented hacker is doing all this stuff, it could leave the scene quite you know, a mess. Okay. And that's when the, you know, digital forensic guys come in, incident response guys come in, threat hunter guys come in to try to track down this hacker who was behind this activity. Okay. Uh, these reasons combine mean attackers, uh, combined mean attackers are often increasingly turning to living off the land tools to carry out their activities since it's clearly beneficial to attackers. Now, yeah. This is where we're at right now. Attackers are utilizing this, and they don't care. I mean, it, it helps them. And you can't really block. Well, I do have a lot that's going to show you that. But you can't really block all, you know, commands. And some of them might be genuine. You know, I'm a current employer. I'm able to run some commands to fix my Cisco AnyConnect or update it through the CMD. All right. I have permissions for that, although I'm technically an end user. Okay. So there's reasons why certain commands are allowed, but you know, certain commands should not be allowed. You know, pseudo switching users and all that. That come on, you know, <laughs> you guys gotta be careful with that. Now we're gonna be talking about living off the land attack vectors. Okay, let me get a quick water break. We're gonna be talking about living off the land attack vectors. So we're gonna talk about dual use tools, fileless persistence, memory only threats, and non-portable executable file tags, all right? What's on the phones a lot today? <laughs> Dual use tools. Hijacking of tools that are used to manage networks and system, which give the attacker the ability to traverse networks, run commands, steal data, and even download additional programs or malware. Example includes file transfer protocol, FTP clients, or system functions such as PSExec, a Microsoft sys internal tool that is used for the execution of processes on other systems. Oh my, I think if you guys remember, we had a lab about that using FTP, you know, genuine port, but we used it to what? <laughs> Transfer or download, you know, malicious, you know, malicious uh, commands or scripts on a target machine. All right, so you could be seeing this a lot, especially in your penetration testing labs on try hacking or hack the box. All right, second one, fileless persistence, a form of attack in which a malicious infection can remain on the system after a reboot, even though it wasn't loaded on the hard disk. This is usually performed by storing malicious scripts in the Windows registry, such as changes associated with visual basic scripting VBS. This is something I learned in Sec Plus. Again, sorry for the, the mower. <laughs> but this is something I learned in Sec Plus about these fileless, uh, you know, mal all this stuff. And this one's fileless persistent. So it's not, you know, it just runs based off the, the memory. So this is something you guys want to watch out for. All right. Certain antivirus cannot pick it up. So this is another dangerous attack vector this hacker can exploit. Uh, oh, there's another one. Memory only threats. The, harm the harmful payload is executed directly in the memory. This is well established. This is a well established form of attack. In 2001, the memory only code red worm infected a large number of systems through a vulnerability in Microsoft's IIS web server. Using a memory only approach allows for infections to breach directly into devices' memory. And while they can be removed with a restart, an unpatched computer is a is at constant risk for reinfection. There you go, memory only threats. 
All right. And last one, we're going to talk about non-portable executable file tags. And this approach to malicious infection affects areas such as JavaScript or PowerShell without using binary executable or dynamic link library files. Non-portable executable files attack affect areas such as JavaScript, PowerShell, Microsoft Office, documents with macros or scripts. Malicious infections remain inside of legitimate tools, all right? Going back to living off the land, now you're poisoning the land, all right? <laughs> putting bad seeds in there, all right? Putting wheat, excuse me, putting weeds and all that stuff. All right, so those are the four most common attack vectors for living off the land. So make sure you guys remember that. Do use tools. These are tools that have general use, great use, but hackers could also flip it on you and use the same tools for malicious purposes. Fileless persistence, memory only threats, and non portable executable file attacks. All right, let's talk about hijacked tool, native tools. All right, and live, li <laughs> I can't, I'm gonna just say the acronym. And L O T L, no, that's too long. And living off the land attacks, adversaries commonly hijack legitimate tools to escalate privileges, access different systems and networks, steal or encrypt data, install malware, set back doors. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. The, I was doing a lot that talked about, you know, setting up back door. I'm going to show you guys that as well. I'm not going to do it a lot, but I'm going to drop it in the chat and just show you guys that. Um, set back door access points or otherwise advance the attack path. Examples of native or do use tools include file transfer protocol, FTP, clients or system. All right. We talked about that earlier. Functions such as P, uh, PS exec, forensic tool such as the password extracting tool Mimikatz, PowerShell, a script launching framework that offers broad functionality for Windows device administration, WMI, an interface for access to various Windows components, and it's a lot more. All right. Oh, this is such a man. I can't wait to get the lab portion, man. I got a lot to show you guys if time per permits. This is some real stuff hijacking native tools. Okay. Now the land grows. What do you mean the land grows? Uh, I'm going to show you what I mean. Why is living off the land growing? Well, living off the land, uh, I believe that's techniques, tips for something. TTPS are becoming increasingly accessible with open source and popular hacking framework and tools such as Metasploit, Powersploit, Exploit Pack, and more. Not to mention com commodity malware, which could be rented or purchased for cheap. It already includes living off the land functionality when sold. Until recently, living off the land techniques were mostly used in post-compromise activity where the attackers leverage legitimate admin tools such as PowerShell, Windows Management instru uh, Instrumentation, WMI, CMD, PS Exec, EXE, and other to others to perform reconnaissance and lateral movement. But over the last few years, Lot bins have oh my gosh I think I have I want to show you guys about that I believe the website is Lot bins if I'm not mistaken as a I believe that's the website that shows you commonly you know genuine tools but how they're exploited um you know from the attacker's perspective so I can't wait to show you guys that so lot living off the land bins have become popular among malware authors as part of their initial compromise payload the detection and analysis of living off the land being used in cyber attacks. It's no longer indication of an advanced threat actor group or robust malware. Nevertheless, detection and mitigation still prove to be difficult for most organizations, even security teams. Yep, we read that in the last slide. You know, is 40% of it is that was back in 2019. 40% of attacks are using living off the land tools and techniques, and it's still becoming undetectable by antivirus software and by security professionals, you know, to trace back to the actual threat attacker. So it's just gonna keep growing and growing. Now, I believe I have a slide. Oh, it's still growing. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna get to that slide later. Why is Living Off the Land still growing? All right, and I believe this is the updated CrowdStrike report, yep. Data from the most recent global threat report, CrowdStrike annual analysis of the threat landscape and adversary universe reveals that six in 10 detection, which is 62%, indexed by the CrowdStrike Security Cloud in the final quarter of 2021 were malware-free. Instead, adversaries were leveraging legitimate credentials and built-in tools, 
a hallmark of living off the land attacks to advance the attack pack. Remember, guys, back in 2019, it was just 40 percent. Uh, what is this? Two years in two years, it went up 22 percent. Guys, this is it's still growing, it's still growing. How are we better trim the grass? Do we need that lawnmower that's outside right now? We don't know. Okay, we don't know. Instead, adversaries were leveraging uh, legitimate credentials and built in tool. Yep, that is a thing. And I can't wait to show you guys live action on how this technically works. And, you know, there's ways to protect against it, but it's just understanding the concept and being like, oh, okay, that makes, that makes sense. Will help you really far in the security realm. Living off the land attacks are becoming more common because they tend to be more effective than traditional malware attacks. This is because they are far more difficult to detect with legacy security tools, legacy meaning old, which increases the likelihood of success and grants the attacker more time to escalate privilege, privileges, steal data, and set back doors for future access. Oh, man, I got to show you guys that lab. Roundup. This is how we get rid of it. We get Roundup, guys. So this is how we're getting rid of these living off the land techniques and tactics these hackers are using against us. So how do we protect against this? This is how we do it. First, primary defense tactic. First line of defense against living off the land attack is to limit the possibility of illicit access to the network, which is common sense. You know, if an attacker is able to get inside your eternal network, that's a that's red flag number one. You got to make sure the walls and defenses are up so they can't even access the internal network to run these commands. It's important that two-factor authentication and the effective credential management are in place on all VPNs and remote access systems. A sophisticated approach to overseeing user and machine identities will narrow the attack vector for malicious actors making it harder for them to gain access and move laterally in the network. Companies with loss or compromised keys and certificates are particularly at risk. Stolen keys and logon credentials can give attackers initial access to otherwise private and encrypted areas, the ability to analyze and monitor identity creation and use will also make it more likely that the behavior of an infiltrator will be spotted in the first place. Remember that attackers living off the land usually behave in ways that make it hard to identify the attack. Uh, guys, it's just general commands they're running. <laughs> general, you know, benign commands is going to make it hard to really pinpoint these attackers. Okay. Now, number two, in addition, ensuring that data exchanges uh, between tools and systems function inside the network are effectively encrypted will also limit the damage an attacker can do if they get inside undetected. Attackers have also exploited system features that can help manage certificates. For example, the Windows program cert. Oh my gosh. That's ironic as heck. <laughs> Wait, I just really, I was just doing a lab last night using cert util. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. This, <laughs> I wrote this last week. This is crazy. Wow. For example, the Windows program cert util used to download and update certificates has been exploited by attackers who have used it to download additional malicious payloads once they entice users to open compromise files. Oh my. I'm working on a lab right now where I just left off from that command. I'm using cert util to download a um uh, what am I? What am I? Oh, WinPs. I'm using it to download WinPs from my attacker machine to the target machine, so I could uh, see the you know privilege actualization, so I can move up in my privilege right now because I'm not root. That's crazy, man. Wow, <laughs> that is some interesting stuff, man. I'm learning stuff right now. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's some interesting stuff. So indicators of attacks. All right. So something I learned in BTO one, uh, an indicator of attack, on the other hand, is a any digital or physical evidence that a cyber attack is likely to occur. All right. So some integrate when I used to you know work as a software analyst, you'll get some indic indicators like okay, weird log on, location and time. Okay, that might be an indicator of attack. Um, 
downloading a lot of gigabytes of files. Okay, interesting. Why is the end user doing all this? For what? These are indicators of attacks. One of the most effective ways to reduce the risk of living off the land attacks is by relying on indicators of attack instead of indicators of compromise alone. Now, IOCs are evidence that a cyber attack has occurred. All right. So if you're able to rely on IOAs, likelihood, the hunch, and stop it before it actually occurs, you could, you know, save more resources, time, etc. Okay. Indicators of attacks are more per proactive detection capabilities that look for signs that an attack may be in progress. Indicator of attacks include signs such as code execution, lateral movements, and action that seem to be intended to cloak the intruder's true intent. This is a, this is really good. I'm really harking on that. So if you see certain users launching some code execution, moving up laterally, uh, that's probably a hacker cloaking his activity behind living off the land attacks or tools, I should say, and that user. So really keep that in mind. All right, and these are my sources for today's um, lessons. CrowdStrike, FR Secure, Armo, and for the art, slide, Slides Go, Flaticon, and Free Pick. All right, get proper credit. So that was that was really good. That was really good. Um, I know people are just coming in right now. We just went over living off the land, history, attacks, and all that stuff. Feel free to watch it on the playback. Right now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to start labs. We're going to show you guys living off the land live. Okay, so let me actually share a screen. Um, show you my setup, which we're going to run right now. I'm curious on what labs we're going to do. Let's see. Do -do 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 -do, share a screen. I have one lab in mind. Man, that's crazy. Oh, you know what? Before we start the labs, I want to show you guys something real quick. I want to show you guys something real quick and take advantage of this. This is for any blue teamer. All right. Oh, shoot. It, I hope it on the wrong side. This is for any blue teamer. So let me actually go to my Notion notes. I'm going to drop this link in the chat. Okay. Uh, right here. So this is a company. Shout out to John Hammond. Uh, it's called anti fison training. Now let's go to the website real quick. And we're going to talk about this link right here, which I'm going to drop in the chat pretty soon. But this company, you know, they kind of remind me of TCM. They do live training. So let's go to improve your skills. Look at all these course catalogs. Purple teaming. I believe they got a penetration course as well. Look at all this stuff. Oh, right here. Introduction to penetration testing by with John Strand. All right, so this is an interesting Linux forensic. You know, some of these uh, courses are free, some are paid, but this is, I'm telling you, this looks really good. SOC core skills. Now let's go to SOC core skills. All right. And guys, I believe he's doing a live on demand session. And look, this is pay what you can. So you can get access to this for free, or you can actually donate to the course. Now, I brought this up, and I'm going to drop this in the chat. Because look what this is. He has a VM workstation, a VM, sorry, a VM machine for this course that comes with all the labs and tools he's going to go over. Now, I'm going to show you guys it right now. It's over here. I actually named it John Strand. So let me open this up right here. Before I open it, let me actually drop this in the chat. It's a 16 gigabyte VM. All right. So it's a lot of, you know, it's going to take some time. You can download it right there. Looks like it's hosted on Amazon too. Another thing, um, let me go back to my notes. He has the GitHub guide. So when you download the machine, these are all the labs you could do. And all, every single tool is within the machine. You don't have to download anything else. All of it's within the, the machine. So I'm going to show you guys a good example of that. So we're going to launch the John Strand uh, SOC VM lab. This is 16 gigabytes. And as you see, this is a Windows 10. PC. Actually, do I have the I do have the creds. Username should be well, well, you'll see. I had the creds remembered by heart. But this is super cool. Again, shout out to John Hammond for, you know, bringing this out. I thought this was very interesting. So that's the download instruction. So we're in the machine now. The password is ADHD, I believe. Logging in. And this is look at this. Look. We got Windows 10. This is my first time running Windows 10 
on freaking VMware. All right. And so this is the machine he talked about. And as you can see right here, where is it? Labs. You click right there on labs. It should open up the labs you could do within this VM machine. See, as you can see right here, bam. So let's, we're not going to do this lab, but we're going to run a quick example. As you can see, this lab is Linux CLI. So he gives you pictures and breakdowns how to do this lab within the machine. So this is a this is a free way to learn cybersecurity, especially for those on the soft side, defensive side. So we're going to do a little bit of this lab. Um, I already did it already. So it says to open Windows Terminal as administrator. And I really like Windows Terminal because look at this. We got Ubuntu on here. All right. So we can practice a Linux on our Windows 10 computer. This is some cool stuff. We got PowerShell. And there we go. We go switch users. I believe the password is ADHD, if I'm not mistaken. And now I'm brute. All right. So this is a fun way to learn commands. So we're going to do a little bit of this lab. Hopefully I could get far with it. This lab, and if you guys, you know, what was at the beginning of the lesson, we talked about how hackers were used living off the land techniques to set up back doors. All right. So one thing, IP config. Oh, sorry. That is IF config. I was thinking of Windows. Bam. So now we're able to see our actual private IP address right here. So this is this machine right here. It's running on 172, 24, 58, 52. Okay. That's what the machine's running on. So we could use this to as our target box or whatever, whatever. All right. And then the land, actually, hold on. Let me see something real quick. I think I skipped some. Oh, I skipped a lot of commands. Um, make nod backpipe. So we're going to quickly run that real quick. Hopefully this works. I already did the lab before, so the file exists. Now let's set up the back door. I was having issues with this earlier. Put that right here. Right click. All right. So hopefully that went through. So we're going to open up another Ubuntu terminal all right okay i see my mistakes now we're gonna ip config on here to catch our ip i'm gonna actually open up a notepad real quick make this small and then put my ip on there so we don't forget oh shoot did i click a command or something i wonder why it's loading okay Maybe just my mouse glitching out. No, I do not want that. Let me actually try that again. Control C, copy. There we go. All right, we got the IP here. All right, so hopefully this this works. Let's try this out. We're gonna run Netcat. All right, tool to listen to ports or um, you know network connections on ports. I'm gonna put my IP in, not the one as you see in the guide. Fifty eight. 52 and I believe we open um we had the back door on port 222 so let's see if that works all right and let's see if we get a shell let's see it's gonna take some time hopefully we could get that shell actually yeah still loading up so we'll see I know this was a lab I was doing I believe I did this last week but this is a pretty fun lab. And then once you get the shell, you can start running some cool commands and all that good stuff. All right. So there's more of these labs out here. All right. And that's just one. You got memory analysis. Turn on. Yeah. Firewall has to be off if you're doing these labs. Certain. TC dump, Wireshark lab, Deep Blue CLI. All right. That's in there. Uh, actually, let me click Wireshark. They have the tool right here. Wire sharks right here. You could capture packets. You know, look at this. Look at this. And it's just going and going. All right. Stop. Analyze. If you guys come from the networking coursing, uh, of course, you'll know about the TCP handshake. You know, as you can see, the acknowledgement. All this good stuff, man. See the destination. All that stuff. So this is a really fun lab to do. All right. And this is all within the John Strand VM. This is what I'm on right now. This is not my actual host machine. All right. So we're going to close that out. Uh, quit without saving. I want to see if this loaded up. Uh, 
Yeah, you might have to come back to that later. But yeah, we're going to close this lab. All that stuff. But I just really wanted to show you guys that. Actually, let me drop this in the course or the description. Hopefully, I could. Yeah, I can copy and paste from here. Okay, so, so the first the, the first thing for those that are coming in right now, uh, TCM is giving away their practical ethical hacking for free. If you guys go to their website, it is free. It's a very great course over 24 Sorry, 25 hours of content for free. And this is how I'm learning it. See right here. I dropped the link right there. So get it now. I believe the sale ends today. Uh, the second link goes into anti-fion, antisiphon training, which I just showed you guys that. That was just one course. And they have a VM lab for that. And it goes over all this stuff. And I gave you guys the GitHub instructions and the download link. So Take advantage of that. So we're going to close this VM. All right. This is not my host machine. If it was, if I were to shut this down, the stream will shut down. So you'll see. And that's the cool thing about VMs. You could do a little malware analysis, practice, do whatever you want, as long as it's legal. Okay. So we're shutting down this host machine. Just wanted to show you guys that. But I do want to crank out a, a box. <laughs> crank out a box. And hopefully close off this, you know, lesson with some cybersecurity news and all that stuff. So this thing is actually taking a while to shut down. So we're just going to actually minimize off of this. We're back here. All right. So that was that. Um, close this. Close that. And let me actually open up that. So we're going to launch, go back to VMware, our hypervisor. And we're going to go into our PMDT lab. This is our attacking box. I actually um, <laughs> I had to reset my lab two nights ago because I accidentally deleted Burp Suite because I was trying to update it. And it, it just didn't feel this. I couldn't get it. I got it back, but it was just weird. I couldn't. It just felt weird. I couldn't summon it from the terminal. None of that stuff. So I had to just erase my whole lab, re-download Kali Linux, re-update it, and reinstall Pit My Kali. All right, so brand new Cali in here. So I don't have any notes in here. So we're, we're doing this fresh. This is the only thing I downloaded, one piece. Like I was telling you guys earlier, I was playing around with Cert Util on one of the machines. All right, so let's put that there and that there. And let's actually, yeah, and let's crank out a lab. Uh, if I could grab this right here, put that down there. Okay. Um, let's see. I want to see. There's a lot of labs I want to show you guys. Let me see. Oh, wrong book. Let's go to Practical Ethical Hacking. This is where I'm learning all my stuff in. Again, guys, the course is free. Go from uh, TCM Academy. Go to that link. I'm almost done with the capstones, and I should be hitting buffer overflow and then getting some AD knowledge. I believe... What did I last leave off? I, I believe it was... I last left off on Butler. I'm not done with Butler. Yeah, but I, I think I left off on Dev. So we're going to attack Dev. We're going to do this machine live. So we're going to see how this goes. So obviously, let us run Dev, which is, uh, is it a Windows 10 PC? I'm not too sure. We'll see. We'll go over. It is only has one gigabyte RAM. Interesting. We're going to run it. OK, it's, it's a Linux machine. OK, so we're running Dev. This is going to be our attacking box. All right, so there we go. This is our, sorry, this is going to be our target box. This is our attacking box. So dev login. Actually, oh, shoot. Did I forget the commands? Oh, let me see if I can find the password for dev real quick. The reason why we need the password to get in. Actually, hold on. Let me see if it's root TCM. Okay, never mind. All right, it was root TCM. The reason why we need the password to get in is to get the IP address so we could attack it. Now, if you guys remember from the networking course in my previous accord, if I run IP all, notice I don't get the I don't get the IP address. I just get a loop back, and that's it. Why? Because I haven't launched a DHCP client. All right, so it doesn't have an IP address. So the command is DH client. It's gonna take some time. Okay, it should be done now. Run IPA. And there's my IP address right there. INET 192.168.109.135. That's our IP address. So first thing we want to do, we're going to load up a terminal. We're going to run NMAP. 
We're going to run nmap. What can we uh, enumerate just from the scanning pers perspective? So if we're going to run nmap, um, let's see. Again, this is a new <laughs> Kali box, so I don't have all my commands. Let's see, I believe it was T4 dash P dash and all, if I'm not mistaken. Let's put that command in there, 168. Or not command the IP. All right, I'm double checking my work. Hopefully this doesn't fail. Okay. Yeah, third count for dash p dash all ports and then dash a get some more information on that. So we don't need this anymore. Wow, that went by really fast. We could just minimize that. So now we have a we have an output. As you can see, I have the same output here in my notes. So we could take a good look at this and see what's going on here. So we see port 22 is open. If you got to remember from the networking course, that is secure shell. Uh, another thing we see, port 80 is open. That's web traffic. So what I want to do right now, we're going to copy this IP, Control-Shift-C, open up Firefox, and we're going to check out the, you know, the browser. Let's see real quick, visit. So as you can see, boat. All right, this is what we're getting when we go to that IP address, this target boss on the browser. All right, so boat. Okay, don't know too much about this. We're still enumerating. All right, so let's go back to the animat result. So we got port 111 open, RPC by, not too sure what that does. We got 2049, and then we got 8080. And as you can see, the service is running is HTTP. But you might be like, wait, hold on. I thought in the networking classing, you said only 80 and 443 were the only web traffic ports. Well, there's more. All right, port 8080 is also web traffic. Don't believe me? Let's look it up. Port 8080. And, that, you know, it was interesting. It's, look, it's a common alternative to HTTP. All right, so bam. Why? 280s, which is this one right here, makes this one. So it's that's very interesting. I just learned something. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to – I'm going to do a new tab. We're going to put colon. Oops, that's not a colon. And do port 8080. See what we get with that. And bam. Okay, it's running PHP. All right. And if you guys remember from the last stream, that is a programming language used on a patch, you know, web servers, especially Apache. You see Apache right there. We're going to use Wapalizer. Okay, it looks like I can't get. There we go. Apache is running as a web server operating system Debian. All right. On here, pretty much the same thing. Okay. So right now we're just enumerating. We're just picking up some info. Um, this is a lot of jargon. All right. You can get lost in here. But we really just want to pin, pin, pinpoint the interesting stuff. So we got that. We got port 80. We got port 8080. What else can we enumerate and look out of it? Uh, let's see what we got here. Yep. Apache. All that good stuff. And we got some more point. And we see, whoa, Mount D. RPC. What the heck is this? When you talk about Mount D, and this is why you got to use Google, guys. If you're if you're hitting these boxes, just Google. If you don't understand something, Google it. And as you can see, I already Googled it in the past. This goes into you know mounting uh servers, you know mounting some data servers and stuff like that. Look, like we talked about yesterday, all right? How servers could be placed on a network and you could still get you know more data. All right, so we got that. We got a lot of information, but let's go down to the notes. All right, as we say, we went, already went to port 80, 80, 80. We did all that stuff. What's next? We want a fuzz. All right, we, we got a lot of, we could do a fuzz. We could do a dir. We want to try to, you know, get some directory busting. What else can we see? Because it can't just be this and that. There has to be more directories. You know, for example, let me actually, I'm just freestyling it. Let me type in admin. Okay, not found. But we got more information. So we're going to do some directory busting. All right, so let's go back to the terminal. I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm just going to go root just in case it pops, you know, asks me for permission. And then we're going to run fuzz, all right, which is a tool used to, uh, you know, look at directories. So I already have the command right here. I'm just going to copy and paste it right here. Copy that. I do have to change. I might have to change the IP. Oh. Oh shoot! <laughs> I asked, did I accidentally paste it? Yep, I did. So I think I already went through already. 
Yeah. Okay, interesting. Actually, let me try that again one more time. That was... Okay, it's... Okay, it does it automatically. Interesting. All right, so that was kind of fast. I don't like how fast that was. Let me actually try this another way. That was way too fast for me. Let me actually paste it like this. There we go. Uh, let me see if that's the correct IP we're attacking for that box. 192, 168, 109, 135. That is the same IP. I already have the command. FFUF, W, that's the user share word list for running it. So we're running a directory buster using a commonly known uh, word list, which is within Kali. So you're not downloading anything here. Just follow the syntax and then use this as your target. So we're going to run that. There we go. This is what I, I wanted to see. That's the URL. We fuzz it. So let's see. So we got this directory right here. We got public. All right, let's take a look at that. What can we get on public? Public. Uh, 404 not found. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, nothing here. Nothing here. All right, that was a lemon. Let's see what else we could get. Um, We got vendor. Let's see if we could try that out. Vendor directory. Okay, we got something here. <laughs> oh, we got something. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Interesting. Okay, we're getting some, and it's always good to screenshot and take a look at the stuff. All right. So, wow, we got some good stuff here. Doctrine and bed, guzzle, parent directory. Oops. This is some good stuff. Bolt, password, readme, markdown. Oh, shoot. I. I did not mean to download that. Oh. Okay, interesting. Yeah, you can go deep. This this is a rabbit hole. I'm going to delete that. I don't want that on my machine. To get rid of this crap, we're going to cut it. Or move to trash. And empty trash. I don't want that on there. <laughs> I just got this Cali machine. Want to keep it clean. All right. So, okay. We got we got put in a rabbit hole a little bit with that. Uh, what else do we got? We got extensions and server status. So, we're going to try those last two. See if we get any good. Um, actually, I'm going to dupe this because I don't want to lose that. We could probably do some dangerous stuff with that vendor stuff. So, let me try extensions. Okay, which gives us that. I believe the last one was server status. Server status. All right, we don't have permissions. All right, so I think this one's the most promising out of them all. All right, and there's potentially some stuff we could do with this. Um, let's see. So we're going back to our notes. And right here, I do have some tips from the course. Again, guys, get the practical ethical hacking course. It's currently free today. Do not take an L on that. Get that course. Oh, you don't even have to start working on it. Just get the course, man. And he's had a great, great tip right here. As an ethical hacker, it is important to learn how to multitask. You will pick up the skill with experience. During engagements, you'll be facing up to 1,000 IPs at once. I can't even imagine. Dude, right now we're just on one IP. 1,000 at once? Woo! That's some, that's some next-level stuff, man. That is some next-level stuff. Now, um... Remember how we talked about Mount D? I had a note about it already. Network file sharing, and I have notes on it. It's a protocol that allows you to share directories and files with other Linux client over a network. Guys, the target machine and the attacker box were on the same network. Okay. Shared directories are typically created on a file server. Running the NFS server comp component, user adds files to them, which are then shared with other users who have access to the folder. All right. So, yeah, we're going to be playing around with this command. We got some commands right here. Show mount command. Shows information about a NFS server. All right. We got the RPC mount D command. Actually, let's go back to the Linux machine. I believe it was under the Kali right here. So mount D. And we had the RPC right there. All right. So these are things I took note on. Um, And more stuff like that. So we won't get too crazy. But what we're going to do, we're going to check what's on these these servers right here all right so 
what we're going to do, we're going to um, open up a new tab. And we're gonna let's see, we're gonna mount, we're gonna we're gonna do a command called show mount, which I actually have it right here. It gives us information about the NFS server so we can see what's maintained over that mount D. So let's run that command real quick. Show mount E. Now let me actually run H real quick. E will show us exports. All right. So we're gonna do E. 192 looks like the IP is still the same from when I last did it. Maybe really like a couple or a week ago, actually. 68. Oh, whoa, I'm not. I can't even type right. 68. 168. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm flipping out. <laughs> 109. 135. Okay. Let's show them out. Okay, server NFS. And then that's the. Okay. So, what we want to do, we want to mount, we're going to make a directory called mount slash dev, and we're going to mount this server, you see right here, onto our attack box. All right, so we can see the information they have on there. Let's try it out. <clears throat> mount, actually, no, let's make mkd, so, so make directory, mkdir, all right, mount dev and again i don't have permission so we could do this two ways i could do a sudo make directory slash uh that right there and it's going to ask me for the password bam so the directory is created now i can mount it to that directory mount what we saw from the target machine all right, mount T, and let me do a mount H real quick. Where's T? Alternative file, alternative file two. Okay, let's run that command. Always do a dash H, get some information on that. So mount T, NFS, one nine two one six eight. 109135 colon server nfs mount and slash d i believe that's supposed to be dev that could be a mistake on my end let me fix that let's try this out crossing my fingers okay i must have made a mistake Okay, let's see what mistake I made here. Let me see. Fail to apply FS tab options. FS tab options. Server dash mounty. Fail to apply. Huh. Okay, so it looks like we came to a roadblock. You guys should look this up. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> it goes back to root. Ah, all right. We're gonna do a, a up tab. We're gonna do a control A. That's gonna bring us to the front. Pseudo. Okay. Hopefully that works. Okay. I think I already authenticated. Man, I got me worried. I'm like, oh shoot. All right. So let's. I got that noted there. Let's actually go to that directory. Mount dev ls. And as you can see, we have a ID RSA, we have a save zip, and we have a to-do text. All right. Um, let's try to unzip that tech uh save zip. Like we could possibly get some information on there. Unzip save zip. Uh, ID RSA password. Um, I'm just gonna put root root our uh, password. Okay, so we don't have the creds for that. Is it access? Wait, is it access? Hold on, let me. Con uh... Okay, I see what's going on. 
Okay, so we don't have credits to both. I want to see. Can I cat that out? Let me see something real quick. Cat to do txt. Okay, I could cat it out. <laughs> I don't know why it was asking me for creds. Uh, let's see. Figure out how to install the main website properly. The config file seems correct. Update development website. Keep coding in Java because it's awesome. JP. So we got a user. We got his initial JP. We don't know who the heck that is. So, oh, <laughs> we're going to have to install a tool to crack that save zip. We could, I think there's some information in here. So since this is a new Cali box, uh, let me see if I remember how to install tools. What was it? App, get. Actually, hold on. This is new. <laughs> how to install tools on Cali. App get installed. Okay. At get installed. Hey, we're still learning. Go to hyphen on it. At get install. And then we're going to go to that tool called fcrack. fcrack. Make sure I'm spelling that right. fcrack zip. And I don't have permissions. I should be in a root. We're going to try that again using sudo. Okay, we downloaded the tool. There we go. We got fcrack. All right, so with fcrack, um, and I have a definition right here, fcrack is a fast password cracker, partly written, written in assembler, is able to crack passwords, protect the zip. Yo, always catch late. I don't know much about ethical hacking. I'm just starting out. No, dude, that, that's cool, no smoke. No, I'm glad you could joke. We just started the lab. Also, no spoke. Um, TCM Academy, let me full screen this. TCM Academy, they are doing, they're giving away this course, Practical Ethical Hacking, for free. So this course right here is free right now. So download it if you can. It is free. I have the link in the chat. It's the, it's the first link on the live chat. It is free. I already have it purchased, so that's why it's not showing us that, but I was... I'll go on, I'll show you from uh, another account. Uh, do, do, do Academy. Scroll down. Uh, where is it? Right here, free. Bro, get on it. <laughs> get on it. It's a cool course. You can learn a lot from it. I'm still learning from it. But yeah, you mentioned, hey, I don't know much about ethical hacking. Same. I don't, I'm, you know, I'm still learning myself. It's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah, get that course. That's going to get you right, man. That's amazing. We'll definitely check it out. Hopefully everything. Yeah, all is good, man. All is good. I'm, you know, I'm glad I'm still able to work and, you know, and just, you know, survive, man. So that, you know, that's a blessing within itself. I'm just going to, you know, keep continuing to get my skills up. And, you know, yeah, I, I don't know if I showed you this on uh, last stream, but yeah, I just got this in the mail. Let me actually make it full screen. Stop screen. Yeah, just got that in the mail. Sorry for the, uh, there we go. Just got that in the mail, bro. So yeah, that's pretty dope. But, yeah, all is well. All is well, man. I just gotta, you know, keep my actually speaking of what what no smoke is talking about, and I we're gonna take a quick detour from the course. I just want to show um what he's talking about because yes, yeah, so I've been recently laid off. If you guys do not know, um, but it's not just me, it's not just me. A lot of people has been affected. Am I still sharing screen? I'm not. Let me actually that's awesome. Congrats again. That's major. Yeah, man. Appreciate it, bro. Let me actually share screen. Because this is actually going to stem into another topic I want to talk about real quick. If we go to, what was that tool? Lay, oh, there we go, right here. Layoffs off I. And this is something I showed uh, No Smoke last night. So this is a lot of layoffs going on right now. So we see this going on, blah, blah, blah. But how's the job market looking like? If I go to, let me actually type in IT Career Questions Reddit. Hopefully, these posts are still there. I, I like to look at this right here. Look what this user said. This is seven hours ago. This job market is insane. Look how many up, upvotes it has. You know, look at this. Apparently, it's also a thing where a lot of companies are doing fake job posting or jobs that, let me see. I'll be enrolling in WGU in part, in part to your videos. Your work is motivation. You don't even know. Dude, appreciate it, bro. Let me know if you, um, you need a sensor for the WGU, man. Yeah, WGU is a great school. To get into guys, follow no smoke advice. Great school, very affordable, great way to get a degree. 
you know, especially in the IT space, very revered degree, man. So congrats on that. Looking forward to your schooling, man. Get that education and build yourself up, man. Super happy for you. You know, but don't let this deter you, man. Do not let this deter you. But yeah, I was saying right here, a lot of companies are posting fake job posting. You know, I believe I think I already hit a hundred so far, and it's only been six days since I was last laid off. Still no bite back. So it, it's a rough market right here. And it's not just me. You see a lot of people saying the same thing. Hey, this thing's insane, bro. Job market is insane. Job market turned sour overnight. Dudes getting sec plus CCNA five years, still not looking getting good jobs. They're actually getting uh whack jobs, 20k less. All right. So you guys want to be careful out there. Do not let this deter you. Although it's a tough market, get your skills up, get your search degree if possible. Do not let this deter you. Okay. And this is not just this post. This is I had I think I had another post on here that talked about it. Let me scroll down. Right here. Why is it the market so rough? <laughs> you know? So I just want to open up with that and stuff like that. It, it's hard. Dude, it's rough right here. It's rough. But we're not going to let that deter us. We're going to get back to these labs. All right. And we're going to start kicking it off. So right now we're attacking. Let me actually fix this now. We are attacking the dev machine. All right. So we just left off. We just installed FCrack on our Kali box because we're going to crack this zip we found from this server. On the target machine right here just to get everyone up to speed so we got f crack i already have the syntax right here i'm just going to copy and paste it and i'll go over the syntax as i paste it into the machine uh copy that we're already into the mount dev folder so we're just going to paste that syntax here we'll do a right click paste f crack that's the tool v verbosity u all that good stuff you can do an f crack dash f and it's going to give you all that stuff we're going to use the rock you text what is the rock you text you may ask it's a <laughs> wordless comprised of almost millions if i if, I, if i'm not mistaken 14 million unique pa passwords are in that little file right there so we're going to run this against the rock you text or sorry against the save zip and see if we can get a password crack bam you guys saw how fast was that? We got a password. So the password to that file, that zip file, was Java 101. All right? So now let's actually unzip that file now, knowing that password. Save zip. Java 101. Um, Replace up. Uh, shoot. Should we replace it? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to click. Let's see. I'm just gonna click no. Hopefully that doesn't mess my thing up. Oh shoot. <laughs> oh god. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. Java 101. Okay, we'll replace it then. Permission to not wait, what is going on here? All right, let's look through my notes. I want to see why that's not working. Let's see. Okay, we're running into a roadblock. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me click yes. Let me try one more time. Java 101. Replace IDS. Uh, damn. What in the world? <laughs> All right, so I ran into a roadblock, unfortunately. Okay. It seems like I still can't get into it even with that account. All right, so we're just stuck. We're not going to worry too much about it. All right, it is what it is. We're going to go and see if we can SSH into this JP account, all right? So let's run JP. Let's run SSH. If you guys remember, Secure Shell is used to remote into computers um, remotely. So we're going to try to remote into this user's account, JP, which is what we found in the... The to do dot text file. If you guys forgot that, I'm just gonna recap that out. Cat to do dot text JP. So we're gonna try to use that initial uh, acronym. I won't say acronym. These initials to see if we could get into this account. Secure shell. I because we're gonna be using the ID IDRSA, which is a private key. JP at and we're going to put in the target box IP 168 109 135. Let's see. 
Oh, okay. Let's see if we could get in. Oh, shoot. This is going to be dope. Okay, it's asking for a password. Okay, hopefully this is where Java comes in because we it didn't work on the save zip, which was a bummer. Let's try it on here. 101, Java 101. Oh, come on, come on, please. Damn. <laughs> We're taking L's, guys. We're taking L's. So it's not working again. So this Java 101 cred. Actually, is my thing on caps lock? It is not. All right. Java 101. Yeah, man. We can't get in. We can't get in. <laughs> All right. That sucks. So um, that was a bummer. That was a little rabbit hole we went on that was not fruitful. Okay. Let's go back to this list right here. And if I'm not mistaken, if I go to the directory bug um, from Fuzz, I want to make sure we didn't miss any. We got vendors, extension, app, source, public. Um, Let's see, dev. Oh, you know what? Actually, hold on. Did I run Fuzz on? Oh. I think I see the issue. I didn't run fuzz on 80.80. Actually, let me see something real quick. Let me go back to the nmap scan. Ah, that's the issue. Okay. I see exactly what's going on. Let me actually go back to my notes. Did I run fuzz on 80. Oh, that was the issue. Okay, I'm going to run fuzz again. I wonder how did I miss that? Copy that. Did I really miss that? There's no way. Hold on, let me go over here. I did. Wow. Control T. Paste. Run fuzz again. Okay, wow, that was a catch. Just cut that, man. All right, you got server status. We got one directory. WG import to your videos. Your work is. Damn, man. That, you know, it's good seeing comments like from No Spoke, man. The fact that, you know, I'm helping people out here. You know, I'm just doing what I can out here. Um, but no, I appreciate that, bro. Really, really hope you enjoy WGU. I loved it. As a student there, mentorship, you know, utilize the mentors they give you. You get a you get a mentor with your tuition. So utilize that, bro. And um, can I like your comment? Oh, I can't. Actually, can I put this on the screen? There we go. Yeah, man, look at this. This is good stuff. This makes me happy. You know, seeing people putting that work in, getting that higher education to better themselves. So appreciate no smoke. Been a great supporter, man, and really looking forward to your WGU journey, man. Good stuff, man. Do not let these harsh job market or these layoffs deter you from, you know, become the best version of yourself. So keep it up, man. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. Okay, we ran fuzz on port 8080. Now we do have some new directories. We have a... We have dev. That wasn't on the last one when we read we ran it. So we're gonna check out dev. See what's on that directory. Let's see. Run dev. Okay, interesting. Um hmm. Bolt wire. Okay, it looks like what the heck is a bolt wire, by the way? Let's take a look at that. We're cranking this box out together. Bolt wire. No, nah. boat wire website. Okay, it's not giving me any information. I'm I'm curious myself. What the flip is a boat wire? That might just be their proprietary website. You never know. Okay, my mind goes places. Oh. Okay, hold on. It's a web development system, surprisingly flexible. Okay. Something to do with okay, so it is a real thing. I was just curious what the heck is a boat wire. <laughs> um, back to this. 
All right, what did we just do? We went to the dev site, see if we could get some information. Let's see, admin. Okay, that's block. Let's make an account. Hacker, password, hacker, it's registered, don't save. Oh, okay. Actually, let me, wait, how's that? Okay, let me make another account. Um, hack, hack. Okay, so we logged in. So we got an account. Let's see if we could, nope, welcome page, welcome tour. Oh, damn. All right. <laughs> let's go back here. So it, it looks like a dead end thus far. So let's move on. Um, Going back to here, I, th I think it was here. Let's look around here. Uh, actually, can I, can I backspace? One more time? No. Okay. This looks promising. Let's see what we can find here. Um, hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's go back to the thing. If we go back to our original fuzz, we didn't try this out. I just realized it. We did not. Anytime, man. Anytime I could catch a live, I do. I like your other videos also. Da, do appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Catch it when you can. You know, always feel free to come back in the playback. I know you're a busy dude. But yeah, man. Appreciate the support. This means a lot. You know, actually, let's do this. Um, everyone get, you know, give a shout out to no smoke, you know, whether live or on the playback, you know, this, this guy, he's going, he's going to school again, man. He's going to school. He's getting his degree. He's improving himself. This is what we want to see in the world. More people building up their skills to bring more value into the world. And I actually want to bring out a book as well. Um, this is a book I recently finished. Let me actually, actually, I don't want to stop screen because it'll get his thing out. This book is called so good. They can't ignore you. All right. I want to read something real quick. What does this mean, though? This is for no smoke and anybody watching on the playback. Be so good they can't ignore you. Introduce in rule two, a quote from a comedian, Steve Martin, that captured what is needed to build a working life you love. It is excerpted from the following longer quote, which Martin gave in 2007 interview with Charlie Rose when he asked what his advice was for aspiring entertainers. Nobody ever takes note of my advice because it's not the answer they want to hear. What they want to hear is, here's how you get it, an agent. Here's how you write a script. But I always say, be so good they can't ignore you. So that's for you, my dude. Um, become so good they can't ignore you. Last thing I want to read, you want to gain career capital. All right. What is career capital? Um, you know, Dr. Cal Newport talks about it. Let's see what it, he defines it as. A description... Oh, you read that book? Oh, okay, okay. All right, you know about it. Okay. Dope, man. Hey, let me finish reading this all for the audience as well, just in case they didn't read the book. A description. This is career capital uh, definition. A description of the skills you have that are rare and valuable to the working world. This is the key currency for creating the work you love. Cal Newport is a great author. Check out Deep Work. All right, I'm going to actually write that down. Deep Work. Not too familiar on that. That might be another book. Let me see. Deep work oh, okay good reviews okay mike cop mike cop thank you for that man definitely look that up deep work okay nice nice yeah man appreciate it man but yeah let's get back to this lab so we missed out on one directory um app <laughs> we didn't really look into this so let's do that we've been down rabbit holes a lot We've been down vendor. We didn't find anything. We've been down dev on port 8080. Didn't find anything. Let's see what we could get with app. All right. Um, looks like we got a cache. Uh, database. This Look at the size. There's nothing in there. Actually, let me go back to cache. JSON. Okay, that's interesting. What's in config? Looks like we got a YAML. Wait, what's in? Wait. Okay, I just downloaded something. Let's see what the heck's in here. Wow, look at this, guys. <laughs> we got creds. I don't know why creds are in here, but we got creds. So I'm glad I didn't look through all the other ones. Let me see. What are these? 
Username Boat. Password I love Java. Where the heck do we apply this at? That's what I'm trying to think. Um, we're gonna save this. We're gonna save this. We got credits. We're gonna save this for later. What we want to do is look up some bolt bolts wire exploits. All right, because that's the that's what the target machine is running on on Google. Um, do 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 do. We got exploit db i want to see what's in here uh, let's see local file inclusion interesting all right so we might run this oh okay 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 i see we're gonna run this use http get requests to browse the following page while authenticated all right we're gonna try this out um also if you guys don't have a browser which everyone should you can also double check and verify this with a, an inbuilt tool called search so we're going to run that real quick search and we're going to type in bolt bolt wire and it says the same thing so it looks like we could run a local file inclusion we're not worried about cross-site scripting because that deals with other people actually on the website we're not attacking people we're just attacking the infrastructure so it looks like this is prom promising local file inclusion i believe Yep, local file inclusion. So we're gonna we're gonna run this. All right. So I actually have notes on local file inclusion. We're gonna take a look at that. D do 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 strings. So it looks like an attack used to get extra uh, privilege. Okay, interesting. Okay, dangerous. All right, that's cool. That's cool. Um. Oh shoot. What we're gonna do? Actually, I think I got rid of my notes. Let me actually scroll down. We're going to try to run that. We're going to try to run that exploit. It seems kind of harmless. So we're going to run it. So let me actually copy this part right here. P equal action. It looks like we're supposed to run this within the browser. So let's go back to this site. Actually, I want to open up another. Um, Yeah, we're, is it on port 80? I'm going to try it on here. Let's see, question mark P. Let's try it on here. Hopefully this works. Oh, it does. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we just tried it on the port 81, and this is kind of dangerous. This is something you could screenshot and send to the client. They have uh, usernames and passwords on here. All right. So let's take a quick look. We got roots right here, Damon, Ben, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what else do we got on here? John Paul. So John Paul was that's the initial with JP. So it looks like his full name is John Paul. All right. Interesting. Full name is John Paul. We might actually use that to uh let's see. Actually, oh, you know what we could do? Remember that password in the, the file right here? Where is it at? I love Java. And if you guys remember from the text note. I have so many tabs open. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Oh, I think it was over here. The text note, he says something about Java, and it kind of lines up. Seems like he's in love with Java. So we're going to try that password to get into his account. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Because we, we actually, hold on. Let me try this. Secure show. Actually, no, I'm in the wrong folder. I want to try this real quick. It was in the Mount Dev folder. No, nope. get out of here. Okay. That's his secure shell. Now that we know his full name, you could potentially do an login attack. Jean Paul at the target IP, which is 192 168 109 135. It's so asking for the password. Uh, shoot. I want to try Java 101. That doesn't work. Let's try the one we found in that YAML file or the config file. I, let's see, underscore, is that a capital L? Love underscore Java. See if that works. We're in, dude. Whoa. We are in. So we're in his account. We secure shell. Wow, this is freaking dope. All right, we're in. So, and as you can see, this is a Linux box, so we can run some Linux commands. 
like history. It gives us the past commands they use. So as 13 is the most recent, it looks like the dude was pseudo zip, pseudo zip, pseudo history, PW. Okay, interesting. This common living off the land, the tools, as we talked about earlier in the course. Interesting. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. Actually, I want to see something real quick. Can we open up pseudo? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. LF. Wait, print working directory. Pseudo. Hey, this is work. Oh, shoot. Can we get pseudo on this? Um, let me try Java 101. Okay. Um, never actually tried this out. Love Java. Does that work? Okay, okay. We're not going to bother with that. Uh, okay, kick me out. Okay, cool. Whatever. We don't care. This is where living off the land comes into play. The whole purpose of this class. And this is where we're, we're about to do this. All right. So pseudo zip. Go use that command. That's the command right there. Pseudo zip. It's a it's a it's a safe command. We're gonna try to uh finesse it. You know, so we have a site. This is what I mentioned earlier in the slides. We talked about DTFO bins. All right. So these are Linux commands, binaries that are, you know, they're harmless, but this is how hackers exploit them. So this this list. It's not a full list of exploits, but it's good enough. But let's go to pseudo bin since we do have access or privileges to use that command under his account. So let's go all the way down. Uh, let's see, pseudo, pseudo. Actually, I think I passed S. Or pseudo zip. Was that? Uh, interesting. Am I missing it? I think I missed it. It was pseudo something. Pseudo zip, pseudo zip. Wait, oh no, wait, was this pseudo? Why am I not seeing pseudo here? Oh, I'm goofy. It's right there. <laughs> All right. So we have pseudo right here. There's something I'm missing though. There is something I'm missing. I'm missing this thing right here. Is this binary is allowed to run a pseudo. Oh, wait a minute. I think I'm looking at the wrong command. I actually go back. T uh do, 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 do. Interesting. Oh, was it under zip? I'm I'm still trying to find that command. Was it under zip? Yeah, it was under zip. Okay. Since we do have access to, let me see, zip. Yeah, we can run zip command. Okay, that's what I, that was my mistake. So that's the command we have a uh, privilege to use. Oh wow, that has a lot of good stars. So we can run zip on his account, John Paul, and it looks like we could use this command right here to break out the. Sh Actually, right here, we could run this ad by sudo, and we could escalate our main team. Dude, this is crazy. So let's run that, actually. <laughs> That's some crazy stuff right here. So we're going to run that. Um, let me see. Yeah, let's do it. I believe these commands are in order. Uh, paste. Run that. Okay. And guys, this is the whole purpose of living off the land. We're using built-in tools to exploit this machine paste selection shoot okay i don't know what's going on something's deflated adding xc host uh it looks like he's doing something do i need to add one more command let's see paste wait hold on Oh shoot! Okay, we're already we're rude already. Okay. <laughs> oh shit! 
Okay, we're root already, boys. Wow. That's freaking crazy. <laughs> so, well, what, what are we doing? So, as you can see, that's the whole purpose. It all goes back to living off the land, using built-in tools and commands to exploit the environment. So, that's some crazy stuff right there. Um, let me see if I can run some commands. Yeah, we're root. Uh, what else can we do? Print working directory. Okay, let me see if I can CD root. Uh, print working directory. Yep, we're in the root folder. Let me see if there's anything in here. And there's a flag since this is a capture. Uh, this is a CTF. We're going to cat the flag out. Cat flag. TXT. Congrats on running the box. So we did it, guys. Oh, what a beast. What a freaking beast. <laughs> Let's go. And that, guys, that is living off the land. All right. Okay, it goes back to this. Remember, guys? Living off the land. We just did a whole full circle. Whole full circle. <laughs> Man, good stuff. Good stuff. All right, guys. Um, looks like we got four more minutes. If you guys got any questions, let your voice be heard. Um, before we close out this lab, this, this has been a great class, actually. Grew did a great box, man. This is some good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, yeah, right now I'm currently working on... Where is it? Working on Butler. Hopefully I can finish that by tonight. I don't know. I like I love to take verbose no notes. Look, this is Butler. <laughs> Dude, Butler's gonna be dope. Hopefully we can run this uh next week. Butler has been a dope lab. I think this is my second to last lab in a capstone. Guys, guys, remember to get that free course. Practical ethical hacking is free on TCM Academy's website. Please take advantage of that. Okay. Close this out. Good, good lab. Dope, dope lab. Actually, let me delete that. I don't want that on the system. I want to keep my Kelly clean and fresh. Uh, folders, downloads, config YAML. We're going to send that to the trash. Empty up the trash. Yeah. All right. We're going to close this Kelly box. Probably going to turn it on again. In like another hour to get some labbing going on. Well, no, that was some good stuff, man. Oof, great stream, guys. Great stream. <laughs> what a what a what a good stream, man. Man, good stuff, man. Guys, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Oh, also updates regarding next week's stream. Um, I have some place to go. Uh, Wednesday night. Yeah, Wednesday night. Going to a huge event. Grabbing TCM course right now. All right, dude, get it. Hop on it. Guys, look what No Smoke said. Get on it. Get on it right now. It's free. It will end tonight. All right. So shout out to you, man. Get that course. Uh, but no, yeah. Next week class. There will be a class next week. I don't know if it's going to be live or not because I'll be going down an event that starts at 7 and I got to do it like an hour and a half drive. So it might be pre-recorded. So just want to keep that in mind if I'm not responding to the chats or giving shout outs to like No Smokes. For the team, I think next uh, week's topic is going to be on APTs. You know, that's going to be freaking dope. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, but no, this was a dope course. Uh, going to the Merge Americas event this week. Tech event. Oh, let me look that up. I haven't heard of that. Merge Americas event. Let me see about that. Oh, Miami Beach. Oh, shoot. This is this weekend. What in the world? Dude, this is dope. Yo, thank you. I may actually share a screen real quick. Before we close out. Wow, I didn't I didn't realize this was a thing. Dude, no smoke is killing it, man. This is what no smoke is talking about. So this is at Miami Beach. Wow, that's like an hour and a half from where I'm at. A uh, 10. Interesting. Going to the Merge Americas event this weekend. Tech event. Damn, good, good stuff, bro. Yeah, network, man. 
Take some pigs to which wow, this is some dope stuff. What is that? The 20th? That is on oh that's Thursday. Is that Thursday? And Friday. Oh no, no, no. I got something I'm doing Thursday. No, oh, good stuff, bro. But no, I appreciate you guys coming to the, the course. This has been a good one. Thank you, No Smoke, for dropping by. And I'll see you guys next week, man. If you guys got any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And yeah, oh, it is tomorrow. Okay. Guys, if you're going to the thing, it's tomorrow. No smoke says tomorrow. Peace, man. You guys take care now. All right. Thank you, guys.